everyone. Let's give another round of applause for Wallen for their fantastic fire dance performance. Uh, welcome to the ABW Unit's 50th anniversary. We're all very excited you're all here. Whether you are a former or current intern, staff, client, or supporter of our work, thank you so much for coming. We're all gathered here today because we have been impacted by the Eden Outreach Unit in one way or another. Special thanks to the Asian American Lawyers Association of Massachusetts, the Harry H. Dow Memorial Legal Assistance Fund, Judge Myung Joon, newly minted Judge Jason Chan, and of course the founders of AOU, Judge Richard Chin, Judge Paul Yi, Jean Fong, and others who are unable to join us tonight. Thank you too to the elected officials who have joined us tonight, Councilman Ed Flynn and Benjamin Tayag, representative from the office of Senator Lydia Edwards who will be presenting with AOU with a citation. much-needed social services to struggling community members in a time where most agencies were closed to the public. I had a frontline view of the economic precarity, food and housing security, and language access barriers that COVID had only heightened. Back then, I referred clients to AOU recognizing the value of having access to in-language legal expertise and advocacy. But since joining AOU myself and seeing things from the other side, I've realized that AOU's work goes far beyond individual cases and extends to strategizing, educating, and fighting alongside communities to address the systemic inequities underlying all those stories of struggle. And to echo Jody's sentiments, it would be hard to sustain my energy and passion for this difficult work if I didn't have the most amazing team sharing and caring it with me. I'm so proud to be a part of AOU and, continue, uh, and to continue our deep collaboration with community partners like the Aid, CPA, BCNC, ACDC, ATAS, APIs CAN, and so many more. Tonight we are here to celebrate not only AOU's history, but also its future. After we conclude our short program tonight, we encourage you to take the time to explore the timeline along the walls inside, starting with AOU's founding, all the way to the present day, and the 50 years in between. Maybe you'll find your own story there too. We also hope you'll stay to see if you'll be the lucky winner of our raffle prizes, and more importantly, to talk to all the amazing people in attendance tonight. In the meantime, enjoy the program and the food donated and catered by Ponda Joy, Tito, Fu Hua, and Asian Garden. Um, and before we start, um, those of our guests who are in the corner there, please feel free to come to the center. There's plenty of space. We don't bite. Yes. This night would also not have been possible without the host committee. 
If you flip to the back of your program, you can see that support for AOU, even in just the planning of this event, runs deep and broad, ranging from nonprofits, pro bono attorneys, law schools, community partners, alum members and board members, Judge Yee, and Mayor Michelle Wu. We'll now hear from two members of that host committee whose leadership of partnering organizations over the years have amplified community voices and helped AOU's groups in those communities flourish. Let's give a round of applause to Lizette Lee from VI8 and Karen Chan from the Chinese Progressive Association. intersectional um, and so I'm really that was one of the beginnings of kind of where I saw my journey within the Boston um, social justice and Boston Asian American community fast forward um, in 2018 I became the executive director at VidAid. VidAid um, is an organization that is at the intersection of being a social service organization as Christine um, shared a few minutes ago, it's also a community development corporation. Um, and it's, you know, really proud also that one of its founders um, is an AOU alum as well. So the pipeline um, coming out of AOU is um, rich and, you know, has inspired many organizations. Our partnership today and in the future is really instrumental because there's only so much that we can do as community-based organizations. So work that we want to do with nail salon workers, you know, we can provide them with services, but if we think about the systemic change, it's that community mooring partnership that we have um, with the team at AOU that we think is, uh, is the strategy moving forward, right? So organizing, service, advocacy, but also how do you, the, the work that they bring in and the expertise um, is how we're very excited as we think about the future of our community, particularly coming out of the pandemic, um, which has had obviously devastating impact um, on the lives of, um, of workers. So, uh, now, Karen. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Karen Chen, and I'm the executive director of the Chinese Progressive Association. So, I was uh, a Dow intern in 1999 recruited by Zenobia. <laughs> um, so, you know, I can say that, you know, I've been around for less than half of AOU's existence. <laughs> and um, I was a paralegal at the AOU from 2006 to 2013. But definitely, my relationship with AOU didn't start in 1999, and it didn't end in 2013. You know, um, AOU, I have to say, that play a really critical part in me deciding to become a community organizer and now as the executive director of the Chinese Progressive Association. I also would say that while I was a paralegal uh, at AOU, it really was an opportunity for me to really build the skills that I needed to be the organizer and the advocate that I am today. So I'm just going to name a few I would say the community 
um, achievements that we couldn't have done it, you know, without AOU. And this is only in my existence, I know, that timeline you see inside is much more extensive. So, you know, in the 1990s, right, it's the decline of the garment industry. AOU play a role in making sure that these dislocated workers get job training. Bilingual education was on the chopping block. AOU played a role in that. Plus, so see, they were going to build a garage on this, right, very um, space. And, you know, AOU played a role in defeating um, the garage. And now it hosts many of the organizations that still work with um, AOU. And um, so fast forward to 2000s, right, luxury de development in downtown right, not, you know, kicked off in Washington Street. There was a rent increase in displacement. You know, we knew that it was a very tough fight, but still, you know, we had a campaign, Liberty Place, right, that actually to fight not the, just the luxury development, to rezone the combat zone, but also strengthening the residents' voice. Um, and then we also filed a lawsuit. Um, we didn't win all of it, but the Chinatown residents of, Association did recognize as a formal uh, residence association that have you know a voice in any development in Chinatown, and that the settlement money actually helped seed it the Chinatown Community Land Trust, and now actually help acquire 29 Oak and 95 Hudson Street. Right, 2010 voting rights. We won bilingual ballot. AOU has a hand in it. Uh, in an eviction defense work, short-term rental regulation. If we didn't defend. Um, the residents were being displaced, we wouldn't have short-term rental regulation in Boston uh, or in the state. Uh, we wouldn't have inclusionary development policy. And now we wouldn't have a mayor who stands strong on rent control and reform BRA. And so last but not least, I want to say that during the pandemic, you know, all of AOU staff, bring all of us community organizers together not only just to organize, but see the legal strategy an integral part of the work that we do. So I say that AOU is an important partner to community organizing. It's a critical part of fight for social justice. It's a place that we groom change makers. So I'm really proud to be part of this history. I am better because of AOU. Thank you. Thank you, Lizette and Karen. It's so great to hear about your journey from AOU intern to where you are today. Interns have always played a critical role in serving our clients. Can everyone in the audience who is a current or former intern raise their hand? We hope to hear from some of you whenever we celebrate our next anniversary. And in fact, you'll be hearing from AOU's oldest intern very soon. <laughs> but first, we want to acknowledge that throughout AOU, long history, Greater Boston Legal Services has been our home. In tandem with the Dow Fund, GBLS has played an important role in growing AOU from its origins by providing space for our work as well as the resources, expertise, and capacity to expand legal aid to underserved Asian American families. As a result, we are able to effectively serve as a bridge for low-income Asian American communities to direct legal services. We'd now like to welcome GBS Executive Director Jacqueline Bowman to say a few words about this historic milestone.
that were cured by laying with the miracles. These visionaries perceived that there was an opportunity to create real change in Boston. First, we added a part-time paralegal to do intake, and that was to help Zenobia out in trying to do everything. And later we were able to add additional staffing to grow the project beyond Chinatown to include other AAPI communities, particularly the South Asian community who were experiencing serious poverty and immigration issues. As we move to the next phase of Asian outreach at GBOS, others will describe later in our program, this is a milestone anniversary. It's the perfect opportunity to honor the advocacy, representation, and community at the center of this ever-evolving project and work. I think it's important to highlight that at the core of it, Asian Outreach is a communal effort. It was founded by law students, driven by clients and community partners, and most importantly, serving as a model of community lawyering. The investments by and for the broader Asian community has resulted in major victories, as, as Karen and Christine described. We had victories in housing, small business stability, community preservation, workers' rights, immigrant and refugee rights, fair elections, education equity, and more. I also want to take a moment here to recognize in particular the Dow Fund. They sponsored They, they sponsored attorney fellows and interns, and they continue to do so. The Asian Outreach Project, as it has been most recently known, has succeeded because of its community. It stands unique among programs at GBLS, and under its current and past leadership, many of whom are here tonight, it has served as a model for effective community engagement. This is also an excellent opportunity congratulate Bethany Lee, our outgoing project director, for brokering our new partnership with Alden. And to also congratulate Janet Vo, who is our incoming project director. This work continues to evolve. And for those who've been involved directly, congratulations on 50 years of meaningful community involvement. So thank you. Thank you so much, Jackie. Uh, we really appreciate your support and as we continue to grow. We'd also like to take this moment to thank our fellow GBLS colleagues and president of GBLS, the president of GBLS board, William Conley, for coming out tonight to support us. Thank you, guys. Next, we would like to invite Sam Hume to come up uh, to stage on behalf of Mayor Michelle Wu uh, to say a few words. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Sam Hyun, and I am the new Director of Federal Relations for the City of Boston. So I'm here to represent Mayor Michelle Wu, who is unfortunately unable to be here with us tonight. But this is an incredible night. This is 50 years of laying down the groundwork for the mayor to be able to do the incredible work in City Hall that she's doing right now. If it wasn't for the sacrifices and, and the hard work and dedication to the community that was laid out by organizations like GBLS and the Asian Outreach uh, Unit, then there's no way that we would be able to, be, to have the agenda and the success that the mayor has already had. And so this is a great credit and an honor to be here with you all because it is the work of the community at the grassroots level that allows uh, folks and leaders like Michelle Wu to rise and be able to lead us in a direction that's going to be prosperous for all of us. So thank you so much. It's an honor to be here with you all and, and an incredible night to celebrate with you all tonight. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next, we would like to congratulate Janet for being our next leader of the Asian Outreach Unit. Uh, please come to the front of the stage so that, we, so that we can present you with this token of our gratitude and appreciation for your leadership as we enter the next chapter in our history. So we'll hear the 
hear from Janet later. But next, we're excited to invite former AUU director Bethany Lee, who's currently the legal director of the Asian American Legal Defense and Education Fund. She will be facilitating a conversation between four individuals who embody the vision, transformation, and impact of AOU. We'll hear from AOU's past leaders, Zenobia Lai, now Executive Director of Houston Immigration Legal Services, and Cindy Mark, now Chief of the Public Protection and Advocacy Bureau of the Massachusetts Attorney General's Office. In addition, joining them will be Judge Eid, who's not just a founder, but also our most recent Access to Justice Fellow, and as promised, our oldest intern and volunteer. <laughs> Lastly, please welcome T.J., a longtime client of AOU and the first deported Cambodian American refugee on the East Coast to be readmitted to the U.S. testimony of all the work that has been done over the five decades that the Asian Outreach Unit has been in existence. I've been a little bit jealous of the fact that she's gotten a chance to interview so many different people to know what the history of AOU is. Uh, you can ask her anything. You can ask her anything and she'll know related to AOU. Uh, so tonight I am, I am excited to get a chance to do a little interviewing on my own. Uh, and I'm gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Paul uh, Judge Yi first. <laughs> I don't know. I got to be his supervisor last year. What do you get to be a supervisor of a former judge? <laughs> oh, so I, I I'm so excited to have worked with you because uh, when I first got back to the Asian Outreach Unit. People were telling me that Judge Yi is retiring. Can you say a few words? Because he had so much impact on AOU. And I, I turned to Cindy and said, I have no idea who he is. <laughs> but I have been so lucky to have had the chance to work with him as the uh, when, he, when he served as the Access to Justice Fellow in AOU this past year. Uh, and the humility and wisdom and, and skills that he brought to the role in walking us through a zoning trial that happened to be happening as soon as he walked in the door, so we were very lucky, as well as thinking through new project areas and developing, 50 years later, uh, new, new things that we're gonna do. 